Hello. Mm-hmm. Welcome to um, the unit three of, um, of the week two of our online sort of based on vision. I um, hope you're finding it easy, interesting, useful um, for any of the goals that you've defined for you joining this um, particular online class. Um, so um, we've We've dealt with Unit 1, which focused on types of data, data sources, and, and Unit 2, which focused on quantitative data collection instruments. And we've been able to design um, a, a quantitative data collection instrument, I mean, which is majorly a, a survey um, for a particular case study. Um, so in this um units will be focusing on the qualitative data collection instruments so um we will look at different types of um, data qualitative instruments and i think this class will majorly be focused on designing um yes a qualitative data collection instrument um so the the purpose of this is to allow you to be able to establish qualitative data collection instruments, the different types that that's on, available, and also understand different type, the different qualitative instruments itself, and also discuss whether a particular collection method will be used in an evaluation phase, uh, which means yes, you knowing a particular time you're supposed to use. Um, a qualitative data collection instrument, the most suitable uh, time you could use a particular type. Then we will design a qualitative data collection instrument together. So let's get into things. Um, like I said, yes, we'll be looking at different qualitative data collection instruments, their types, and also uh, we will compare different focus of evaluation as it as it regards the qualitative data collection type um just to mention i mean um social science as uh, so the field of social science has, has deeply worked on qualitative research methods um, as a methodology which is also used by evaluators as well and do not forget that, yes, there are some essential, essential readings um, that you can make use of, uh, like, um, yeah, I think in particular for for this unit will be stake, uh, stakes qualitative research. So it's important you might want to, uh, yeah, take a look at it and, and, and read it. So, I mean, we have some essential readings that you can um, take advantage of. Um, yeah, perhaps before you uh, start going into the deep down into the unit or uh, if you feel like, yes, you can read that before starting the unit. So they will be useful uh, actually um, as essential readings and as further readings as well. So um, when we talk about qualitative data collection, um, what that means um, actually is that yes i mean most times you're relying on the judgment of the evaluator um, to provide insights to develop insights into a particular program project or policies um, as the case may be so in 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 qualitative data um, the instruments majorly is actually the evaluator so is the one who using the evaluator's perception, his observations, his interpretations um, into the life of a program. That's that's what a qualitative data collection is all about. So, which means the evaluator must actually be an expert in in being able to make such judgments and make such inferences and also triangulations as well so this is where it becomes interesting like um, an expert trying to get information from from different places and now making sense 
out of it, uh, out of the interviews, out of the guidelines, out of the checklist, out of um, the focus group discussions, out of the key expert interviews. And that is all what qualitative data collection um, is all about. So let's discuss the different types of of qualitative instruments that the main person, the main evaluator can can use. Um, most times, so um, it's we, there's some interviews that we refer to as yes, qualitative interviews. So which necessarily is just to yes, I mean, um, mostly important for letting interviewees talk much more about the knowledge they have about a particular object, a particular program, about a particular policy. Um, so it's meant to actually elicit their perception and, and, and also collect a whole lot of body of knowledge that beneficiaries, stakeholders, project implementers have about a particular project or program or policy. So uh, we say they are qualitative interviews and we can also divide qualitative interviews into, for example, narrative interviews. Um, so narrative interviews are just open-ended interviews. You can call it unstructured kind of interviews. Um, so interviews in which you will just say that, oh, thank you. Uh, for taking part in an interview. I am A, B, and C, and I work with social, social organization, which has been running evaluation all around the world for the past 10 years or 12 years. We feel your experience in this field will be very useful, and, um, and it will give us more insight into improving the kind of projects that we do. Um, so as such, I'm con conducting this interview. Uh, and you just mentioned one question, and you might just say that, oh, could you please tell us a brief about these projects that ABC organization have been doing about HIV? What do you think? Uh, what are your thoughts about this? And the interviewee starts to talk about his experience, sequences, events, and, and all that without you interjecting. So it's a long narrative, open, unstructured uh, kind of interview, which is meant to, yes, give a narrative. You could think about it as a biography. So someone <laughs> talking about the biography or, or discussing his, his life. So we call it a narrative interview. Um, and not to forget they are quite unstructured. Uh, it's just for the interview to just give a narrative of, uh, of a particular program, project, or policy um, as well. So that's narrative interviews. You could have guided interviews. So guided interviews are actually um, particularly structured. So you already, you as the evaluator or the enumerator conducting the interview would already have some questions on your notes or in the paper called an interview guide. And you would make sure that you follow strictly what's on the guide. So all the questions that can be asked would have been written down and you follow each and every one of the questions. So questions like, how long have you been working in your current role? Mentors, what priorities have been set? How are they chosen for a particular program? So you already have it listed um, in a document and all what you just need to do is to ask the questions based on what's on the document. You cannot change it, even if the interview is giving another perspective uh, aside what you've written down. So, you so it's it's just something that is structured. Uh, so that's what we mean by structured. So you have a question already, 
uh, especially that might be related to your indicator question or evaluation question, and you would not necessarily want to uh, restructure the questions. Then you can have the expert interviews. Um, expert interviews can be unstructured and also can be semi-structured. Um, so you want to get more information from an expert who is knowledgeable about that area of specialization where the program is being implemented. For example, if the project is about uh, homegrown school feeding, for example, in, in basic education, and you want to get more insights, you want to get more knowledge around such program, you will now need to discuss with um, with experts. So one one of the methods you want to use is, uh, is is to do an expert interview with somebody who is more knowledgeable uh, in the area of basic education, for instance, or probably in the area of uh, social programs all across the world. So you want to talk to such person, especially. So uh, your questions could be structured or could be semi-structured, semi-structured, uh, could be unstructured, rather, could be unstructured uh, or semi-structured. So um, semi-structured means that, yes, you wrote a guide, uh, a structured, you already have a guiding question, but aside that guiding question, you could also allow the interview for uh, for this, the expert to actually change some of the questions you have, change the direction of some of the questions you have. So you're not rigid about your investigation questions or the evaluation questions. It means you could develop some questions from what you get from the expert. So that's just uh, what it means. You can also have a focused um, interview. Um, yeah, which could be with, so this kind of interviews is done with beneficiaries of the program, the program implementers, um, those that are closer to the beneficiaries, and it could also be an unstructured or a semi-structured type of uh, question. So, I mean, this also is related to the indicator you have already set out for that program, the evaluation question. So you could use that to answer the evaluation question and also the indicator as well. So that's focused um, interviews. And another type of qualitative interview you could uh, have is the problem-centered interview, which is a structured type. So this is also structured, you follow your guide and you do not need to uh, tweak what is on your guide. So, um, and and this looks at individual actions, subjective perceptions, and ways of the with social realities. So, you pose questions that are yeah that looks at the social problems in the in the community in the environment. Um, for example, the use of drugs by youth um, in a particular program. Um, so so. With that, your interview is actually problem centered on on something or on a social problem um, in the society. So, and and you want it, you want the respondents to be able to answer the question, the evaluation question that you set up for that. For instance, the extent at which uh, at which um, youths um, use uh, drugs in a particular society or community. Uh, an example might also be the extent at which um, um, inmates, for example, um, each is for cigarette smoking. So things like that that are socially related you could term as problem-centered interviews. So these are different e examples of qualitative interviews that you can actually have and don't forget uh, uh, in the broader sense they can be structured semi-structured unstructured and structure structure unstructured means that yes it's a narrative it's open um, 
you can just ask one question and the respondents start giving you answers and majorly you use this with yeah people that are knowledgeable that are experts in that field um, while you have uh, the semi-structured kind of interview which is a mix of yes a guided question so you have a guided question in your notes in your hand printed out but also that you now use the response from the respondent or the interviewee um, to tweak what you have uh, on your question guide. And you could have the structure type, which is basically um, um, having question guide and you do not divert away from what you have on your question guide. Um, don't forget that, yes, we, we have... Um, a question, I think there's an assignment um, for this session which is supposed to design a qualitative interview. Uh, there's a master, um, yeah, there's a sample master interview which you can actually look at, could be very useful. Um, okay, I can take a look at it, at this and, and connect back to the internet, so it's telling me um, let me check. Um, yeah, I'm connected to the internet. Uh, do not know why this is not actually opening, but I mean, we'll take a look at that anyways. It's the master guide and it's in the question already. So um, maybe I can refresh and see what's going on. So, but in the meantime, um, Yes, yeah, so let me see again. The master guide and the qualitative interview. So, so I mean, you have several um, sample documents you can take a look at in here. So, let's open this again. Yeah, so you have something like a guide, which is, yeah, like a master guide. But yeah, it looks like a guiding question for a particular evaluation, but you can use this actually to create um, your question guide as well. Maybe a structured, unstructured, yeah, for a structured interview actually, or, or a semi-structured interview. Um, this might be something to, to look at um, as well. So that's it for qualitative interviews. You could have group methodologies where you have group interviews. Um, that's an interview with a small group of people um, who are not necessarily like a focus group. So you could have also have group discussions where you have different kinds of groups in, in one place and different uh, set of individual and group with different opinions in one place and you can have a focus group discussion which we normally refer to as an FGD um, which looks at certain groups so you have a, a an interaction with certain group could be for example male that are between 30 and 35 um, so that's a focus group you could have female that is between 30 to 35 in another group. So you don't mix them. And that's the difference between focus group and group discussions. In group discussions, you're going to have um, individuals that, yeah, opinions and different between different groups, uh, different individuals. But in focus groups, these are, um, these are groups with particular set of screen we call it screen screen can necessarily mean characters so uh, for example male 30 to 35 that have um, that have been part of a program before you could have another 30 to 35 female that was part of the program and you can have 30 to 35 male that were not part of the program so that's we refer to as uh, as focus group uh, discussions and yes, of course, those group discussions could last for between one to one hour. Thirty minutes is conducted in uh, in a place where you can actually record uh, the interaction that is going on, so that you do not miss out on the conversations that are there. 
uh, always advisable to have a group between seven to eight in one group so in essence we're talking about so if you're thinking of a male 30 to 35 they might not necessarily be more than eight so five to eight in that um, in that group is important um, so yes I mean you can think about this as, as group interviews um, in the class work as well you have a sample um, focus group discussion uh, you might take a look at it uh, also I mean this is also a sample as well on what to think about what to uh, things that you need to look out for um, especially he has been able to elicit more information from people and be able to also uh, put in rhetoric questions like oh can you give an example can you explain further uh, if i get you right this is what you're saying is this correct so things that uh, because people easily just give you surfaces of, int of 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 information so i'm not necessarily deep so you want to probe more further during such uh, conversations so and you want to move it around in the group because um, so that it is not as if there's one person in the group that is speaking but if you have a group of five or eight then you want the eight to actually speak to um, the question so it's important to have that uh, have that as you as a moderator so a focus group always have a moderator and that's always the evaluator um during the moderate the moderation so um observation is also um, an instrument that's used by evaluator so you do not necessarily need to go and ask some people um, about a program you can actually do that by just observing the program so observing a tv program observing a radio program observing a meeting advocacy meeting um, so you can get perceptions behaviors interactions actions uh, by uh, beneficiaries or, or people that are within a program and you can have different types of observation it could be structured and it could be unstructured structured means that you have an observation checklist yes you have an observation checklist and um in in some of the samples yes you in in the classroom you actually have uh, this um kind of checklist that you normally take which is yeah this is structured um you can take a look at that um so that's 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 an example of a structured um observation it could be unstructured whereby you do not necessarily have a checklist but you as an evaluator you're just taking your notes and and, and it's that it could be overt or covert so just like um um a detective so you could go as a detective for the program um or or decide not to go as a detective you go announced so i mean um for example there was an evaluation we just concluded on on, on um, financial inclusion about uh so it's a monitoring evaluation of grantees that are actually providing services in terms of financial inclusion to um, to citizens through um, agents and uh, the evaluation was targeted at we visiting um, the agents of the grantees and what we did was to use both so one was over to one was covered so we went there unannounced not letting them know and we had done our checklist then another time again we had to go um, announce so they saw so i mean just for us to just oppose um the responses uh, or, or the interactions we were able to deduce from that um you could observation could be as a participant or as a non-participant so for example an evaluator can be part so for example if there's if there's a if there's an advocacy meeting or a stakeholders meeting uh, that is called within the program 
an evaluator can go and yeah be part of um, be part of the program and at times it may be withdrawn he or she might be withdrawn and be non-participant so he does not register he is outside and yeah i mean not interacting so could also be active and passive so it could be active in such events so like yeah making suggestions and, and all that um making comments in a program and it can also be the other way around uh, like John is only taking his notes so um, you can you can think about that as um, as a, a type of uh, collection instrument so I mean it's important to note that we've we have actually divided this in, into three so you could have qualitative interviews you could have group method inter interviews and also that you could have observation um, method uh, for collecting qualitative uh, data instru uh, qualitative uh, data so um, uh, this now leads us to yes you need to think about the focus of your evaluation the methodology that you're going to use and when exactly you want to collect the data we've, we've done this in unit one about when you want to collect data so um, so this third column shouldn't be new to us except maybe there's some words like ex ante um, which means yes before the program uh, before thinking about the program so and you have this line exploration so what we try doing here is to try and look at here's yes, the focus of the evaluation versus the method that can be used and also the type of um, evaluation or evaluation design which might necessarily mean yes we're supposed to look at type of evaluation on the fifth week uh, so or the fourth week whichever one so uh, but this is like yes yeah, jumping the gun but uh, this is just for us to be able to note that yes if you want views of um, of stakeholders uh, within a particular program um it's important uh, in terms of their judgments and and all it's important that you look at yes analyzing documents and having uh open and semi-structured interviews so so that you don't come with a structured guide whereby the stakeholders will give you some other kind of information so think about using document analysis um open or semi-structured interviews open means unstructured and you can think about yeah expert interviews also as well i yeah, have said this before and you can always do this uh for yeah exploring blaze lines um the final part of the program uh, you can use it as well so uh if you need access to special knowledge about your research objects especially a subject that have context in different contexts so think about expert interviews um, and also narratives and you could use this uh, before we program studies and also for baseline studies um, as well so uh, if you're thinking about the collective viewpoints and several directions for a particular program then think about uh, a structured focus group discussion, um, which means a guided focus group discussion. And you could think about a group discussion that is just narrative, uh, that is open structured um, as well. So um, we have different, uh, we still have more uh, if you want to. Yes. Uh, if you want to construct if you're thinking about yes constructing new social situations and and, uh, and social attitudes for a particular program you might want to think about document analysis so which means looking at records records of the programs meeting notes board notes um, 
logistic nodes um, as well. So, I mean, as much as as much documents you might want to think of as it concerns the program, um, you can think of open interviews, observations, so which might mean yeah, ethnography, um, also then video records. So this allows you to generate a new context for that social situation. Um, so, for example, uh, I still go back to yeah, drug usage uh, as an example. So uh, this is done like an exposed. Yes, uh, exposed means yes. After the program has concluded, um, you could do it before the start of the program and also in within uh, a program as well while the program is going on. It's also possible as well. Um, there are complex, so complex projects, complex systems um, that you might want to reconstruct. You can think about also document analysis, narrative interviews, uh, and as such. Uh, please feel free to go to uh, stake and, and check. Uh, we have several resources in here um, that you can, uh, in the essential reading, that you can think about. Uh, so and this can be so useful for for qualitative research methodology, which we use as well. So um, we hope that is useful. And on that note, we will move towards developing a semi-structured interview guide for our case study five, which is the Green Distribution Program for Green Party. Um, with the objective of reducing the number of households affected by the Iranian community. So just a, a little bit of framework, not like we're going to get deep into the, uh, into the interview guide and, and all that. So um, let me see how to proceed. So um, it's already a classwork for just for you to to know it's a class work and it's uh, quest it should be assignment two qualitative data yes so um, just click on this um, so you can add or create there's the guideline already here you can add or create once you're done so you just come here I can just create by using a doc or you add a file if, it, if you've done it in Excel you can just add the file and upload so I'm going to use the Google Doc and so that I don't need to let me just create a Google Doc for that and I'll work on that and use it to submit um, so boom. yep so it's going to automatically have my name and I can start my guide. Normally I do this for my guide, having an outline first. So introduction, then I have introduction, stimulus. I'm not going to take uh, a whole lot of time on, on, on some of that. Then I have planning. So uh, I'm still going to refer to my indicator in the first um, year in case five that I ha already have so um, planning might be there I might think of um, cooperation with other uh, partners that's what that means then the successes that was recorded in the project And perhaps difficulties, then I can also think about uh, the impacts of the project or the program or the policy, then think about the future uh, planning. And this is where uh, some of the lessons, this is where you ask questions about the lessons um, from the program or the project. So um, I'll just do some brief, and, and don't forget that I have, um, I still need to look at my indicator actually, and I already, uh, one of my outcome indicators that I can 
that I can think about now is uh, yes, the percentage of we've talked about the percentage of households, right? But in this case, I actually have um, remember that I have an outcome or, or, or I have a, I have non-numerical data actually. Um, I think I can check. Um, I should actually check um, that particular document. It's possible that I have it somewhere. So let me see. Um, blah, 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 blah. Let me just pull it out. I think it will be this. So I can look for unit 5.0, I guess. Yep, so is this. So just just for you to also understand, um, not this, I guess. Um, so, um, yeah, but I can just, I know it's the, one of it will be the perception of household members on chlorine usage probably on chlorine usage or So this is about their perception, right? Mm -hmm. um, so this is one of my questions. program itself, you could think about that chlorine distribution. This might not be part of the indicator that I earlier did, but I know this will be part of it. Um, or the perception on yeah, um, chlorine usage radio and or TV programs. So. I have two indicators that guide me. I quickly go to my introduction. Um, I could say yes, I would like to welcome you to the interview. Uh, thank you very much for your time. And so I mean, this is uh, Um, your insights will be useful in curating a better and improved program for Kiribati in the coming year. So, um, you could also say, yeah, everything um, you say in this interview will be treated in accordance with a privacy policy 
so something to protect the person that is uh, so uh, and, and treat, treated confidentially so i mean you should put all this as a guide i mean you as a neighbor it might not be you uh that is involved or that will be maybe you have your enumerators but this guides them whenever they want to start uh, yes uh, so um so depending on the target of my um of my so i might be assuming that my target is maybe key stakeholders for example um, maybe the chief of the village so um, something to just introduce ourselves how long have you been the chief in this community so i mean you could think about the chief or it could be also an household member or, or, or so um, what are your main task so i mean you could go on and on but um also think about um task or relationship with yeah the remember the ngo um that is involved in this so um then you think about planning um yeah i mean um what priorities the, the chief council took uh you know things that are of target audience and, and all perhaps you, know, you could also say that um, what are the target groups so uh so questions like this just keep popping up and you think about um the relationship also comes up again um so you, you think about this is where you talk about um when the relationship start started with the ngo think about uh, the other ngos that are providing chlorine water so i mean also think about yes what does it like about NGOs work and what doesn't he like so I mean I'm I'm just writing this uh, just the way it is then you think about uh, yeah it's important to always raise examples ask people for examples um yeah i mean um for the, so you will have all these questions in me that is guiding you on how to respond to to them um, So, um, sources is recorded. Uh, could be, uh, yeah, um, forms of distribution of clear.
chlorine. Can you please tell us how the project went? So, I mean, as in terms of delivering, then you think about the impact. Um, what changed since the distribution? So here you need to think about dimensions and uh, what the effects are. Got it. Uh, I just got done with my uh, uh, perception of so. Uh, so I do. I do not need to forget this. Or you might have mentioned it in, in any part of. So this is about the impacts now. Watching since the distribution, what are the effects? In. So I want to expect that. Yes, you will mention this um then about the radio program and um, comes of you then please tell us how project went so i expect that you would have mentioned it uh, at this point so um not necessarily direct but it's from the conversation because i also do not necessarily want this indicator but i want to elicit more information as well so um, so that's why uh, that is. So I hope you can complete your own um, qualitative data collection instrument for your case study that you've picked. So what I'll do is just turn this in. I'll just click on turn in for that particular question. And 
in my yeah it said one attachment was submitted so just confirm it and say Tony and yep I already turned it in yep so yep so that's submitted already and and that's how you create your you can um, it's just advisable that you explore some of this other one for course group discussion master interview observation checklist um, they create and also that there's a worksheet actually you could also um, take a look at it takes a look at so I mean the four column table talks about your indicator so what are your indicator what kind of questions are you asking in here that's your evaluation question then it tells you what kind of data collection instruments uh, you should use um, but I mean you should know that the if is about perception yes I know it's qualitative and I, I know my indicator might necessarily be non America so um, so that's just what it means um, for each of your indicator you can use this as a worksheet put it in here and and work on it i think it's very useful it's a very useful worksheet as well um so i hope this session has been uh, very useful to us uh, discussing um the different types of qualitative data collection instruments um, uh, and also looking at yes when you can use them and and also being able to design um, a semi-structured interview guide um, thank you so much for for listening i hope this is useful for you don't forget to uh, make comments um, in the comments box comments suggestions questions we can start a discussion from there um, thank you so much and have a good time